Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Most of us are aware that the changes we've made to this planet negatively affect the animals that we share the planet with. Climate change can shrink many animals' natural habitats and pollution is ruining our marine ecosystems. Although we are warned about many species in peril, it's rare that we hear of iconic species going extinct. It's not that there are no animals going extinct, as it's thought that around 10,000 to 100,000 species are becoming extinct each year. Instead, the process of declaring an animal extinct is quite common complex. Extinction is generally quite a long event, with an animal's numbers slowly declining until eventually there are none left. As the world is such a large place, there are plenty of different areas where endangered species can hide and they can easily go unchecked for years. This is why on many occasions a certain animal has been declared extinct, only to reappear years later. On the other hand, animals that are declared extinct this year could have actually gone extinct decades ago, so in most cases it's almost impossible to find out when a species actually went extinct, and some recently extinct species species could still be out there. Many extinctions go unnoticed, either because they're unremarkable species, or they're plant or fungi species that very little people know about. But in this video I'll be shining a spotlight on some of the most recent extinctions, as I'll be going through five species that went extinct in 2021. And our first species is the bridled white-eye. Now there are plenty of species of white-eyed bird in the world today, and they all look very similar to each other. The bridled white-eye was endemic to the northern Mariana Islands, where it inhabited tropical moist lowland forests. Their diet mainly consisted of seeds, nectar and flowers, but they were also known to feed on insects and small snails. This bird was last seen in 1983, and the following year it was listed as endangered. Like with many recent extinctions, humans were the cause, but not in the way you might think. This bird didn't perish because of pollution and global warming, but instead because of a very famous invasive species. If you take a look at where the northern Mariana Islands are, you'll see they're very close to Guam. During and after World War II, army personnel and vehicles were moved through Guam, during this time, the army accidentally introduced a new species, the brown tree snake. This snake is native to Southeast Asia and Australia, and is generally a mildly venomous bird hunter. When this species became invasive in Guam, it totally annihilated the native bird population, and they are still a big problem today. As there is a lot of trade and movement from Guam to the Northern Mariana Islands, it's thought that these snakes could have hitchhiked to the Northern Mariana Islands, and they're thought to be the main reason behind this bird's extinction. Before this invasive snake's arrival, their numbers were already low, but the brown tree snake did put the nail in the coffin. But our next species is the splendid poison frog. Now this dart frog was endemic to western Panama and was found in humid lowland forests. Like many other dart frogs, they were highly toxic, and it would kill most predators that decided to target it. Like most dart frogs, they were very small, and rarely reached sizes of over an inch. When you look at the various species of poison dart frog, you'll notice that they are all very colourful. They come in various colours of yellows, oranges, reds, greens, and blues, and you might think this is very bad camouflage. But instead of trying to hide themselves, poison dart frogs tend to do the opposite. They want to let all predators know that they are toxic, and that they shouldn't be eaten. This is a form of aposomatism and it can be seen in many other rainforest inhabitants. Although many think it might be risky, these frogs are also kept as pets. These captive specimens actually lose their toxicity as they absorb most of their toxins from their food. In the wild they feed on many toxic insects and this in turn makes them toxic. In captivity they're generally fed fruit flies and this often means they're safe to touch. These rather splendid frogs were once common in their range but was last seen in 1996. Human activities such as logging and urban expansion were thought to be behind their decline and eventually they disappeared. But as these are very tiny frogs, and they can easily go unnoticed, it is possible that they could still be out there in some remote area, but for now they're one for the history books. But our next species is the Molokai creeper. Now this bird was a species of Hawaiian honey creeper, and was only found on the island of Molokai. They were usually found in open forests, where it used its blunt short beak to pick out insects. Unfortunately, as I've covered in recent videos, many of Hawaii's native birds are going extinct. Island ecosystems are some of the most fragile ecosystems systems, and outside invaders usually cause massive problems. Habitat destruction played a major part in their demise, but of course so did invasive species. Instead of just one species being behind their decline, it turns out there were quite a few. One of its main problems were introduced mosquitoes, as these mosquitoes spread diseases such as avian malaria and fowl pox. These diseases eventually led to paralysis and then death by starvation, and it cut down their numbers at an alarming rate. Other invasive birds also spread other diseases, and one of the invasive birds in Hawaii is another member of the white eye family.
family. Other invasive species such as cat and mongoose also led to their decline, and they were last sighted in 1963, before eventually being declared extinct in 2021. So although this is a deeply sad story, it's only one of many Hawaiian birds that have gone extinct. Before our next species, we'll be heading to the freshwaters of the USA, as we have the freshwater mussels. Now instead of focusing on just one species this time, I can pick from quite a few. Many of North America's freshwater mussels are going extinct, with around 60% of the freshwater mussel population vanishing in the past 20 years. Many people see mussels as very uninteresting, but they do play a very important role in the ecosystem. They often go unnoticed in the riverbed, but down here they are quietly filtering the water. They filter out algae, bacteria and plankton from the water, and this in turn makes the waters in which they're found in very clear. They also help to mitigate nutrient pollution, which leads to dead zones in some waters. The mussels themselves are sometimes preyed upon by fish, but many mussel species also rely on fish to breed. They often mimic a small fish to lure larger fish over. They then trap these fish and lay their eggs on them, and then the fish would distribute their young. Humans are thought to be the main reason behind the freshwater mussels decline, but not in the way you might think. Of course pollution plays a role, but the main problem to freshwater mussels are dams. Freshwater mussels are adapted to survive in shallow free-flowing waters, and they simply can't survive in deep cold oxygen poor conditions. This means that when dams are built, they often flood old mussel habitats, which eventually leads to them dying off. Invasive species have also played a role, as famously zebra mussels have taken over large areas of American rivers and lakes. So although it doesn't look great for the freshwater mussels, we must do our best to protect the species that remain. But for our final species, we'll be moving back over to Hawaii, as we have the Maui Nakupu'u. This again was another Hawaiian honey creeper, but of course this one was endemic to the island of Maui. They were mostly found in the highland wet forests, where they were heavily dependent on two native trees. These two species of trees are very good at attracting insects, and associating with these trees meant that they had a higher chance of finding a meal. Their inch-long curved bills helped them get at their prey, which was usually beetles, butterflies and moths. This bill could get at insects from in the tree bark, and proved to be a very useful adaptation. Unfortunately, this bird story is very similar to the other honey creepers on Hawaii, as they fell victim to diseases and invasive species. They were thought to be common in the early 1900s, but by 1963 it was thought to be extinct. Remarkably, it was rediscovered in 1980, but there were only thought to be around 28 birds left. A decade later, there were thought to be only one or two birds, and eventually it was declared extinct in 2021. These recent extinctions should go down as a warning sign, as if we don't change the way we live or the way we treat our planet, we may lose even more iconic species. And even though it's very unlikely, hopefully this species can be rediscovered for the second time. But that's about it for this video. Most of the animals in this video came from a list of 22 animals that went extinct in the US in 2021, and I'll leave that list linked down below. Sorry this is such a depressing video, but as always I think it's important to talk about. But that's all for now, thank you for watching. If you could like and subscribe I'd appreciate it, but until next time, goodbye.